I can have your attention. We're going to go ahead and start with our program. Also, want to thank Trey Lewis and Beef O'Brady for providing the, the meal. It was very good. Thank you. Um, our next speaker who is going to introduce the speaker is also the... Um, the sponsoring the sponsor of our meeting here is Ohakani Healthcare. Uh, CC Robinson is the communication relationship director. Whatever yeah. I'm told to do. She is um, she has many many different roles and she does them all great. She's also the vice president of the Chamber of Commerce and has been a staple in helping us um, promote the Chamber of Commerce through any, every way necessary. Also wanna recognize, um, as I'm going through this, is, is Judy. She was very, she was very missed during her time. She was um, ill, she had a, some back issues, so she's feeling a lot better, or a little bit better, but she's here with us and we're so happy for her. Um, we also have a campaign going on right now through <clears throat> Our marketing um, with it's called um, Chamber Chamber Works. Chamber Works, and we're going through some of our chamber members. We've had Chase Vincent, myself, and Judy. And we've got a couple more. We're trying to have uh, one a week for a while. That way, we can kind of explain what the chamber does and how it benefits the community. So, uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you Cece Robinson. You don't know her already. <laughs> nicest introduction Josh that may be the nicest Josh has ever spoken to me so I just want <laughs> to put that out there hey Josh you know that I never go on script right right yeah so I always like to add a few things one thing that we've talked about doing but we've not done at our chamber meetings is introducing our chamber board directors so if you're a member or a chamber board of directors stand up everybody who's here today stand up um, so this is a, a sampling of just some of our Chamber Board of Directors. They meet monthly, they sit on subcommittees, they come early, they stay late at meetings to help us to get ready. But most importantly, they go out there into the community and they help make those um, collaborative relationships that make us a stronger community. So thank you guys for all you do. Uh, I always joke that um, this is my third go around I'm on our Chamber of Commerce. How many times did you get to serve Steve or Scott? I just want to make sure I beat you. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, I'm going to say I beat Scott Lewis in serving <laughs> more times than he has. So with that, um, I came back um, maybe the beginning of last year or the middle of last year, and I really think I must have just gone to the bathroom or gone to place a drink order or something because I came back and I was vice president. So always word to the wise, don't leave the table. Eric, there you know. As our newest member, you know now. Yeah, don't leave the table. But I'm always glad to have that role, and um, I love being part of our chamber. Um, with that, today, not only do I get to represent the chamber, but I'm always so incredibly proud to be able to represent Ohio County Healthcare. Um, we um, look forward each year to hosting our Chamber of Commerce. We love to be able to be here and connect with our business community. Um, so often when we see you, it's within the walls of our, our facilities, or we're treating you in healthcare, or we're trying to provide healthcare education. So we love the opportunity to be here and have a moment to just say we appreciate what you do to support Ohio County Healthcare, and not only that, but to support the people of our community. And everyone in this room is, um, is wonderful to Ohio County. And while you, we may not get to recognize that every way and individually, the part that you play makes us the community that we are. So thank you, each one of you. Um, so fun for me today um, is I get to introduce uh, several of our team members. And um, I want to start with our brand new CEO. And I get to say brand new because she's still within her first year. So if you could have a stand up, Ms. Shelly Schaus. So while she's new, as of last July, July 2022, to the role of CEO, she was part of the Ohio County Healthcare team as our CFO for um, five years previously. Um, Shelly has led us through um, just a whirlwind <laughs> of her first nine months. Um, she brings 22 years of healthcare experience, and I think we needed every second of that <laughs> during this fiscal year. Um, she took the reins um, of our organization with a medical staff of 34. So that would be 34 physicians, nurse practitioners who were either employed by Ohio County Healthcare or who had a contract with us to provide services. 
in her first nine months, we have added 17 providers. So she definitely has hit the ground running and she's also gonna get the absolute pleasure of opening our um, new surgical wing. Um, and I cannot um, go any further without saying thank you to the judge executive, the fiscal court, who time and time again partner with Ohio County Healthcare to bond with us, to make sure we have the financial means we need to expand our facilities, expand our services, to make sure we can take care of our community. So thank you, Judge. Thank you for all you and your, um, your court does for us. We appreciate it. And I think the judge would attest he's probably signed about um, a thousand documents this last two years. Yes, sometimes a triplicate. And he's done it without protest. Um, also with us today is some of those 17 providers. So I'm going to introduce first, I'm going to start with our newest family medicine physician, Dr. Angel O'Quinn. Some of you got to meet her last month at the chamber. So, Dr. O'Quinn is um, family medicine. She grew up in eastern Kentucky. This was her chance to come back home. She and her husband, Stephen, have settled here in the Ohio County community. And she is practicing up in our Fordsville Area Medical Clinic and also in our other rural health care clinic in Butler County. So we're glad to have her. She's a month in. Are you going to stay? Yeah. You like it? I love it. Ah, oh, she loves it. That's awesome. Sitting next to her is a familiar face. Dr. Campbell's been to several of our chamber meetings with us. Dr. Mike Campbell. So Dr. Campbell can't say that he's from um, Ohio County or living in Ohio County, but he grew up in Muhlenberg County, so pretty close. And um, he um, ha has provided general surgery services for us over the past decade in different capacities. Um, about a year and a half ago, am I right on that? Or has it been two years already? For how long have you been back this time? Six months. It has not been six months. Yeah, six months. <laughs> seven months on, it feels like Gosh. very long. Yeah. Well, it feels a lot longer to me. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Campbell has been back with us full time as our general surgeon. Um, he is a, a driving force in building that surgical excellence initiative that we are, are, are working towards with our new facilities and bringing on all of these new um, um, surgical providers and primary care providers. So we appreciate all that they do for us. Um, in addition to that, I have a few housekeeping tips I wanna bring. But before I do that, if you're part of our Hawkins Healthcare team, if you could stand up. Yeah, these guys worked hard to come here today, get this set up, deal with the chaos of, of all that we happen. And um, I appreciate their hard work in, in making this happen for us today. Um, they, um, we have incredible people at Ohio County Healthcare, and we're very proud of them. Um, so with that, a few other um, housekeeping tips as we talk about um, our sponsorship. One thing we like to talk about is the fact that not only are we here to take care of your health, but we're here to take care of the health of the economy. So on your table, you have an economic development report. Um, I'm going to read this line item by line item. I will take questions after each line. Is that okay with the group, Chase? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So with that, in all seriousness, this is for you to take home with you. Um, this just kind of gives you a general feel for the economic benefit that Ohio County Healthcare brings to the community. We believe strongly it's our job to give back to the community. So this just gives you an outline of local taxes we may pay. This may be the number of employees we have and the downstream ripple effect of their spending. Um, I was sharing with Senator Meredith, and I'm going to have the pleasure of introducing in just a moment, that um, one of his colleagues had, uh, was on Kentucky Hospital Association talking about the uh, amount of revenue that is provided to a community when you bring a new provider in. So what we have estimated that every time we bring a new provider like Dr. Campbell or Dr. O'Quinn, it's about a million and a half dollars worth of downstream revenue in local spending, office space, hiring of employees. So this year, in the last nine months, you can take that to just what? Over $20 million worth of additional revenue that we are bringing or spending we're bringing into the Ohio County community. Um, but we do that because we want Ohio County to be strong because when you're strong, we are strong. So please take that and, um, and if you have any questions, reach out to me in my office at any time and I'll be glad to talk to you about it. You also have an updated physician and um, provider director on your table. Um, what you will see on that provider directory is um, 
some of the newer services we've um, brought on board with us is an expanded affiliation with um, Advanced Center for Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Um, we've worked with them since 2016, but um, just in the month of March, we were able to expand that affiliation that we have five day a week orthopedic coverage in our clinics and 24 seven orthopedic coverage in our ER. And that's a first for us guys in a long time that we've had 24 seven orthopedic coverage. You guys may know Advanced Center for Orthopedics um, under the name Osmo. And Senator Meredith, I bet that you're gonna get to know Advanced Center for Orthopedics really well because his son Bryce Meredith just joined them. Was it yesterday, sir? Yesterday. Yesterday. So while he will not be in our Ohio County community, we're glad he's part of a team that we value to help take care of our patients. Additionally, we um, have um, signed Dr. Mark McGinnis. He is an Owensboro um, orthopedic surgeon that's practiced in this region for many years. He will be starting with us in February of 2024. So we're excited about that orthopedic growth that we have. I'm not with us today because he got cut up in surgery is Dr. John Ruth. He's an ENT surgeon that um, started with us just a few weeks ago. He will be providing a full range of ENT services and um, he practiced in the Bullingham community for many years. Um, Dr. Ruth not only provides ENT services, but he also performs Inspire therapy. And that is an implant in the, um, an implant that helps treat sleep apnea for those who may not be able to tolerate the CPAP. So, okay, that's all my marketing done. We're gonna move on with that. Make sure you visit the Mac before you leave. Did everybody anybody visit the Mac? Did everybody see the big mobile trailer sitting out there? Okay, so when you leave here, make sure you visit it. It is a mobile access clinic. We take that out into different parts of our community, both Butler County and Ohio County. We use it to promote vaccine confidence, um, actually give vaccines, provide preventative health screenings and education, which Ms. Jamie um, Daniels is gonna to talk to us a little bit about some of those preventative screenings here in a bit. You may be wondering why we have toilet paper on the table. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, that was not part of my original table design, but Jamie came in today, and I simply cannot say no to her. So um, one thing that we know Senator Meredith is passionate about is um, good, strong colon health screenings and colon awareness. And so um, not only are you gonna have an opportunity to win a flyer on the table, but you get to take home a roll of toilet paper because we're gonna wipe out colon cancer. And you're gonna do that because you're gonna get your colonoscopies which though he's a general surgeon, Dr. Campbell does also perform colonoscopies, just saying. Um, the flowers on the table, when you get up, and I don't want mass chaos now, so wait till you leave, look and see if you have a dot under your table, under your chair, if you have a dot under your chair, you get to take the flower on the table home with you. And on the back table, we have as a gift, um, it Weren't No Bear, and this is the first book from our beloved Dr. Kevin Gregory. He is a hospitalist with us, been in our emergency room for many years. This is his um, debut out, or his debut um, um, book, and he has signed them for us. So we I welcome each of you to take one home with you. Josh, did I get everything? Okay, that was, that was encouraging. Um, <laughs> there's bags on the, um, table where Judy is because we've left you so many goodies to take home and um, thank you. Thank you for letting us be here and thank you for being part of the outstanding care we get to provide. Okay, Senator Meredith, I think I left you maybe five, ten minutes to talk. <laughs> you can have longer than that. Um, so with that, I would like the honor of introducing um, State Senator Stephen Meredith. He was first elected in 2016 following his retirement in 2013 from um, a management services where he served as CEO of Twin Lakes Regional Medical Center for 30 years, as well as a regional administrator for several other hospitals throughout Kentucky and Illinois. Now, I am going to say this. I'm going to ad lib a little bit. Senator Merritt was always a good friend of Ohio County Healthcare. He worked very collaboratively with us when he was in Twin Lakes, and sometimes we had to compete with each other, but we always did it with a smile on our face, and we always stayed on the same side of the table, knowing that two strong organizations, which is better health care for both of our communities. So we always have appreciated his, um, his, his um, stewardship. 
He graduated from Litchfield High School and received his undergraduate degree in business administration and accounting from Western Kentucky University and his master's in healthcare administration from the University of Minnesota. He was reelected in 2020 with an 82% of the vote. Um, what happened to that other 18%? Just praise everybody. I know it, come on. Um, with 82% of the vote, Senator Meredith currently serves as the legislative co-chair of the Government Contract Review Committee, chair of the Senate's Health Services Committee, and a member of the Senate's Education Committee. Veterans Military Affair and Public Protection Committee and Families and Children Committee. Um, I think you also recently were um, nominated to serve as on the Advisory Colon Health um, Screening Committee. Am I correct in that, sir? Yes. Um, one thing I know he's very proud of is to take funding to be able to bring funds to rural communities to provide colon, um, colonoscopies to those who may be uninsured or underinsured. Um, Ahaw County Healthcare was the recipient of one of those grants, and so we actually have funds still available if you know someone who may not be able to afford that valuable screening. Um, he's been married the past 42 years, that is awesome, to Karen Meredith, a retired elementary school teacher. They have two sons, Chad Meredith, who's an attorney practicing in Cincinnati, and Dr. Bryce Meredith, who we spoke of earlier, a board-certified physician in family medicine and sports medicine. We just figured out went to college with Chase Vincent. So it all comes back home to Ohio County. Um, they are blessed with seven grandchildren, ages ranging from eight months to 13. So with that, welcome to Ohio County Chamber of Commerce. I think you said it's your first time speaking and we're so yes. excited. Come on Thank up. You. Thank you. Uh, my remarks are probably shorter than your uh, my Bible here, but I appreciate it. Great to be here. Uh, it always feels like I'm home when I'm in Ohio County, but uh, first person I ran into when I came into the building was Chase. We hadn't met before, but he told me he went to school with Bryce at Center College, and I thought, that's so great. But it reminds me, uh, a couple of uh, winters ago, I was in Elizabethtown, was wearing a Center College sweatshirt, and this girl comes across the parking lot. She said, like the other side of the parking lot, running towards me. I thought, she's awfully excited about something. And she comes up there, did you go to Center College? I said, no, I wasn't smart enough to go to Center. I just got this sweatshirt. There's so much. <laughs> That's a true story. Uh, painfully true. As a matter of fact, I found uh, my old high school report card the other day, and uh, Scott found out I made a D wow. in shop. <laughs> yeah. How does anybody make a D in shop? But, you know, that's pretty much you. you yeah, work at that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think about that. But pleasure being here, truly. And uh, so let me give you a little bit of my background. This is the first time I met with you folks. I uh, was born in Louisville. But by the love and grace of God, that we moved to Grace County when I was eight years old. And truly, one of the greatest blessings of my life. My dad was a bowler maker by trade. Matter of fact, uh, he helped build Paradise Steam Plant. And uh, this was in early 1960, and he was staying in Central City through the week and coming home on the weekends. And he decided after a year that we had to move closer. And uh, quite truthfully, he was thinking about moving to the Bigger Dam or Hartford. So this is for the West Kentucky Parkway, and you had to come down 62. And our family's originally from Grayson County, so we stopped to visit with family. And uh, that was the rest of the story. I mean, he actually <laughs> retired uh, from, uh, from TBA. He worked annual maintenance there for, for many years. So... I've, I've been well acquainted for this uh, community for a long, long time. I was asked, how did I come to politics? Uh, again, it's one of those things, willing the grace of God. I retired in 2013. It's always uh, my dream to get out of 59 and a half, and the Lord bless me, I was able to do that. And um, as I mentioned, I have two sons that were grown, uh, a, a doctor and attorney. What's peculiar about that is uh, kind of doctors and attorneys are nemesis of uh, possible CEOs. No offense, folks, but <laughs> so I have a son who's an attorney and a son who's a, a doctor. So I said it's a former rebellion, I guess. <laughs> I was home uh, on our 55 acres. My wife was still teaching second grade at Clarks Elementary, and I had my two Labrador retrievers, and life was just so good. It truly was. But I described it as like having a pebble in your shoe. So I'm telling you, folks, I am the most blessed man on the face of the earth. And it just didn't feel right just sitting home, uh, getting to have so much fun and uh, figuring I need to do something to get back. I wasn't sure what it was. And bear in mind, I got in healthcare when I was 22 years old, so I've been in the public side pretty much my entire life. 
And my wife and I heard a sermon back in 2016 about the different way God speaks to you. That's not as direct as we would like it sometimes. And my wife, and I don't mean this as an insult to her, she would acknowledge it. When it came to politics, she didn't know the president from the polar bear. She really was as apolitical as anybody you met in your life. And she said out of nowhere back in 2016, you need to run for this office. In my first draft, no, I'm pretty good at this retirement thing. It comes natural to me. First thing in my life, I just kind of comes natural to me. You know, in the next six, seven weeks, she kept saying, you need to run for this office. So I figured, big guy's talking to me. So again, I'll, I'll acknowledge I am in the Senate solely by the will and grace of God and the, the goodwill of the constituents who I am blessed to serve. And I truly mean that as a blessing. You know, when we're redistricting in 2022, um, nobody likes change, do they? No, you just say, if you've seen this exercise before, you're asked to cross your arms, you know, try that. Just say, cross your arms, humor me a little bit. Now do it the other way. I'm really uncomfortable. You know, we don't like that kind of change. Can you imagine if, you know, you get a new Senate district? And originally I had Meade, Breckridge, Grayson, Emmons, and Hart in LaRue County, six counties. Uh, the idea of the Senate district is 118,000 population plus or minus 5%. We had to redistrict every 10 years to recognize the population shift. And I had done my math. I did get a D in shot, but I got a C in the math. So I did my math. I found out that uh, my district was okay. It's 121,000. So I thought, I'm set. Walking down the Senate um, uh, annex one day and start to see President Stivers, President of our Senate, coming towards me. I thought, he's wanting to talk, and I'm sure it's not what I want to hear. So he's walking towards me, and I'm kind of doing this number. And he said, we need to talk. I said, what about Redistricting. I'm set. I'm set. He says, no, sorry, you're not. You folks know what's happened. Uh, our population shift in Kentucky. We've lost so much population on the eastern side and the western side that it's compressed towards the middle. So he said, you're losing LaRue, uh, Hart, and Emerson County. And, okay, who do I get? He said, Butler in Ohio. I'm blessed. I'm truly <laughs> blessed. So life is good and so proud to be here. Well, what's really peculiar about my career in the Senate, uh, my first... Uh, week in Frankfurt. This happens to all new legislators. Renee Shaw interviewed all the new legislators. And she started my interview with, I see you have 40 years healthcare experience. I guess you have a healthcare agenda. I said, nope, truly don't. That was a different world, a different time. I purged all that gray matter from my mind and I'm going to move on. I've got too many other interests. She said, well, such as? I said, well, three things come to mind. Education, education, education. Because that's what we really had to focus upon in Kentucky if we're going to move this state forward. And it's such a challenge to do that. But if you follow my career during the last six, seven years, you're probably going to say, well, you're a liar <clears throat> because I'm intimately involved in health care, um, being a hospital CEO. You know, she said 30 years as a hospital CEO, but really, Shelly, that's more like 210 years because every year is like <laughs> dog years. But um, I have been an advocate for rural health care. But more importantly, I think I'm an advocate for rural Kentucky. If I want to be known for anything during my career and while I'm in the Senate, it's fighting for rural Kentucky. Again, one of the greatest blessings of my life was, was getting to grow up in, in a rural community. But if you look at the foundation of our economy, in, in most of our communities, the foundation is health care, and it's a school system, the largest employers. You know, back in 2008, 2009, uh, the um, recession, uh, we lost several factories in Grayson County uh, due to NAFTA as well. But if it had not been the hospital and school system, I'm not sure that community could have survived. And I certainly wouldn't uh, wish on you folks either, but you have to understand what an important foundation this is to, to build your community. It has to. Because how are you going to recruit anybody to a community that you don't have a quality of life that you want someplace else? So I fight continuously for hospitals and school systems. It's a challenge. Um, CC, you and I talked about it a little bit earlier. As a hospital CEO, one of the biggest challenges is recruiting healthcare professionals from rural communities. And I've asked this question to the Secretary for Health and Family Services and for our many care organizations. Why would anybody choose doctors to come to a rural community knowing that you're going to make 20 to 30% less than your urban counterparts with more complex patients, less compliant patients? It's a real challenge. And Secretary Freelander says, I don't know. The MCO will say, I don't know. And that's a problem. You look at the health care problems in Kentucky and in America, it's because we don't have access to care. You know, we have expanded the Medicaid program just tremendously. 
You know, my incentive in 2016, we had 1.4 million people on Medicaid in Kentucky. Today it's 1.7 million. But that doesn't mean because you have Medicaid coverage, you have access to care. And I certainly commend you folks to come into a rural community. I think I had great success when I was a hospital CEO. I started with seven doctors, ended up with 34. And what I would sell them is, we had a medical foundation that hired our physician, said you can make it the living that you expect in an urban community, but the big difference is you're gonna make a difference in people's lives each and every day. And you folks do that, and I appreciate you for that. But it's such a challenge to have to do. You know, rural hospitals in particular have been hard hit since Obamacare started. Uh, when I left the business in 2013, the average profit margin was two and a half cents on the dollar. As we went through uh, uh, Obamacare and uh, other challenges, it dropped to less than one half of one percent. And all you folks are business people. Can you imagine operating a business where your profit is one half of one percent? Before COVID, we had, um, I think, close to 25 percent of our hospitals, rural hospitals in Kentucky, on the verge of failure. Now it's closer to 60 percent. But we've done some things in the legislature. I think they're going to support that. One being our um, hospital reimbursement improvement plan for inpatient, which we did two years ago, which helped a lot. And I thought that would balance the ship for us, but then COVID hit. We passed legislation this time to have a hospital uh, reimbursement improvement package for outpatient services. And this is gonna help us a whole lot, but it's still not gonna address the full issue. And one of the things that I passed this last legislative session is Senate Joint Resolution 54. And this tries to address that fundamental problem again is why won't people come to a rural community? Because you make so much less. So what I've asked the Medicaid department to do is develop a payment methodology based on the National Deprivation Index. This is an index that's developed by the federal government for every zip code in, in the United States. It measures six different social economic factors, you know, like education, unemployment, things of that nature. And obviously the higher index you have, the more disadvantaged you are. So we're challenging Medicaid now to build that into their payment formula. So we'll redirect those funds to rural Kentucky. Not just rural Kentucky, but urban as well, because we have urban healthcare districts too. So I'm hoping that uh, this will be a springboard for really strong reimbursement for uh, rural healthcare providers and those who have urban districts as well. And we just came out of a very brutal legislative session. Um, this was my seventh and really it was the most challenging that I've been there. Ran into one of our colleagues in Louisville last week and he said he'd been through 30 sessions. He said this was the absolute most uh, challenging uh, because of the uh, transgender bills that we had to do. Uh, sports betting, medical marijuana, and those were all needed legislation, but I really was concerned that we overlooked one of the most significant things that happened during the session, and that was with our income tax. That in January of next year, we've reduced it by another percentage point, now it'll be four cents on the dollar, and during my term in office, we've reduced the income tax by almost 33%, with the eventual goal of eliminating it altogether. I tell you, that is sound fiscal policy because one of the biggest challenges we've had has been there since I was elected. You understand, with income tax, over many, many years, Kentucky has exempted 50% of our revenue from taxation. 50%. Then we've got the problem that 40% of our working age adults are not in the labor force. So that leaves a very small percentage of our population that's carrying the full tax burden for this entire state. And who are those people? Do you all? They're employees each and every day. It's an unfair tax burden. But the political reality is we're never going to reverse these exemptions for income tax. It's just not going to happen. So that's why we're trying to model ourselves after Tennessee to broaden the base for sales tax, but hopefully eventually eliminate personal income tax in Kentucky. It makes sense to admit that you tax productivity. Uh, you need to tax consumption, and that's what we'll do. And that's the fairest tax. Everybody will have to pay something, and that's the way that it should be. And I think that makes the future very bright for Kentucky. We're seeing some things that really position our state well. You know, we've seen great economic growth, but it goes back to this income tax reduction. It goes back to some other things that we did over the last three or four years. So Kentucky's positioned very well. But I will caution folks that our next budget is 2024. It seems like we live in budget cycles. I think it'll be the most challenging maybe in the seven years that I've been there because we're not gonna have this federal money that's been pumped into our system. And inflation is eating all of us alive right now. So it's really gonna be a challenge to put together a, a budget for this next um, uh, biennial for Kentucky, but I think we can do it, but we have to be patient as we continue to grow the jobs in Kentucky and, and grow our, our economic base. 
So I think the future has never looked brighter for Kentucky. And that's overshadowed by a lot of things that go on in this world, such as what's happening in Louisville right now with all the gun violence, and that's something we're definitely going to have to need to address. And um, as chair of the Health Services Committee, that's one of the things we'll talk about this summer, I hope. But the focus uh, is not going to be gun violence. It's going to be violence. I'm amazed every time something like this happens, we want to talk about guns. We need to talk about violence. You know, about spouse abuse, child abuse is all time high. Teenage suicide's an all-time high. We need to understand the fundamental reasons as to why our society is acting this way to begin with. So that's one of the things I hope that we get to uh, challenge in the, in the summer. But again, uh, we'll use the rest of this year to prepare for the 2024 session, and I'm sure it'll be as challenging as this one was. But I just want to tell you again that I think we've got a great uh, group of legislators. I'm very pleased to work with Scott and Suzanne. It's interesting, uh, when we're in session, we very rarely see each other because we're so busy in our respective chambers, we see each more when we're in these events we get into the place. But I want to tell you what a great job they do for us in, in, in Frankfurt. I'm proud to be associated with them. But not nearly as proud as I am to be able to represent Ohio County and you folks. And it truly is a blessing. And anytime I can be of service to you, please let me know. Thank you. God bless you. with Kentucky Cancer um, Program has a gift for you. So I'll let her make her own introduction. Um, I just want to thank you, Senator Meredith, for being a friend of Kentuckians. Uh, one of our goals as the Kentucky Cancer Program is to reduce the incidence and mortality of cancer across Kentucky. One of the best ways we know to do that is prevention. Having a colonoscopy is a preventive service. So this is just a little thank you from our organization. Uh, and please keep educating your constituents about the importance. Thank you. This isn't a self colonoscopy kit. It? <laughs> it might open be. it Very later. <laughs> this is our 20th anniversary of the Colon Cancer Screening Program. And it really has been a success story for Kentucky. And uh, uh, a lot of things we don't knock the home runs with in, in uh, our state government. This is one program that's good. Absolutely. We have moved from the very, very bottom to the, one of the top in the nation. And I encourage you, you need to take this seriously. Uh, I'm 70 years old. I've had two colonoscopies myself, and I can tell you, it's the best 45 minutes of sleep that probably I've ever had, so that's the positive side of it. Prep is a little bit difficult, but it really is important. The survival rate, if you have uh, a colonoscopy, is, is tremendously higher. And tragically, it seems like it's affecting more of our younger population than it used to be for those of us over 50 or 60 years old. But now, you know, if you're 40 years old, you need to start giving consideration of having a colonoscopy. It doesn't hurt, uh, great sleep, and improves your health. It truly does. But thank you. I appreciate thank that you greatly. So much. Thank you. Are there any questions for the speakers? Yes, the senator. Any questions from the floor? Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Josh to close this out. Josh Coppich, our president. Um, be sure to take your um, wipeout colon cancer toilet paper. There, you've got some post-it note cubes that um, have a rendering of our new surgical center and our building surgical excellence. And there's bags because we have tons of stuff. Jamie, I think you've got more stuff on that back table and your book. And visit the Mac. Josh, it's all yours. Thank you, Senator, and thank you, Cece, for all the announcements and everything that she does for us. Um, anybody else have any other community announcements, anything going on that we don't already have in our... Oh, Celebrate Your Child. We have posters back here for Celebrate Your Child. It's back, and it's going to be bigger and greater um, than ever before. So we're super excited about having uh, Celebrate Your Child back into our community. Last Saturday of this month. Yeah, last Saturday. 10 to 2, high 10 to two at the high school. So um, if we have nothing else, then we'll adjourn. Thank you all and have a good rest of your day. Uh,